This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Thanks for checking out one of our past live sessions. If you had fun and enjoyed it, we'll hope you tune in for one of our future lives. And remember, if you're one of our paid members, you can watch these and all the rest of them anytime on your platform. Hey there, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us. I thought uh, this would be a fun excuse to teach you how to pipe buttercream roses and do some cute cupcakes that are very much in fashion, especially on Pinterest right now. And then I also have an easier version, oh, thanks for the hearts, um, that if you're having trouble with the roses and you still need more practice, it's beautiful and elegant. But also if you're doing a project, they make a great pairing together and give you some good variety. So not everything has to be difficult. You can mix in some simple stuff. So I'm gonna go over each of the tips that I used to decorate these and show you the techniques on paper first and then go over piping a rose and then we'll put some of these together. So for the moment, I'm gonna set these two beauties aside, maybe up there so we have our goal at the top and I'm gonna pull over this tray and then I'm gonna find my tips. So the first thing and the easiest are number seven and five. The seven I have green in the bag, the five I have white, and it's what I've used to do these cute little kind of hypernicum style berry things that are over there uh, that are adorable and easy. So the thing we're gonna do with the seven is make a dot, and then we're gonna use the five to do a dot on top. So anytime you're doing dots, you just wanna lightly touch the surface, lift off just a little bit so that your buttercream can squeeze out, then you want to stop squeezing and just gently slide it to the side. And I'm going to get this a little closer so you can see that gives you a nice dot without a peak. Right? And I'm going to use my smaller tip just to go directly on top of that. And I'm going to build up and do the same thing. So that gives you just two levels of piping right there. Right? You do a whole bunch of those together and it looks like a nice little grouping. Right? The second thing is a number 352. This is a leaf tip. Right? So there's two kind of main styles of leaf tips. This one has a V-shaped opening. The other ones are kind of shaped like a W. Using either one gives you the same results. I like this one because when it's stored, the little tines can't close together like it can on the W ones, and then you don't get those three separate streams of frosting, and I can see from the hearts that maybe some people have had that problem. So I like these. And you hold them just like you would kind of like a duck's beak, and you take one of those points, touch to the surface, and then you squeeze and let the frosting kind of come out, and then you can continue squeezing as you pull. And by varying how hard you squeeze, whether you jiggle it a little bit, how much you're squeezing as you pull away, you can change the size of your leaf and the style. So I'm just gonna do a few of them really quickly. So small, right? Just squeezed it really for like a half a second, right? Squeezing while jiggling gives you a longer, more traditional leaf shape. So you can do small, large, you can do elongated ones that look like they have veins in them, and you can get a lot of use out of the same tip in a whole bunch of different styles. All right, so next I have a star tip that it's a number 199. You can see it's got a big opening like a number 12 tip, and it has lots of small, tiny, little tines, little points on there. So it's gonna give you a star with a lot of ridges. And these are pretty because they almost look berry-like, right? and they give you those beautiful big stars with a lot of different points. So they're a great thing to use when you want some variety and you kind of don't want everything to look the same. Next, I've got a 1M, so this is a Wilton tip. It's a larger decorator style tip, right? You can use it for covering the entire top of the cupcakes, doing rosettes. You can use it to do, right, just stars or rosettes and depending on how big of a circle you draw, right, you can get different sizes on those. So those are some different things that you can do on top. And then the final one I'm going to use, and I know this is a lot of tips today, but we're making fun, pretty varied cupcakes, right, is the 104. So this is our petal tip. We're going to use it to make roses and rosebuds. First thing, rosebud, you take the fat end, 
touch it to the surface, let the frosting balloon out, just rotate it a little bit and pull back. And that gives you just a little kind of like half petal. If you lay the tip flat across that little kind of protrusion that's sticking up, squeeze, the frosting will join together and kind of roll over on itself. Right, and I'll show you that, and it gives you a nice little rosebud. You can then add some leaves to the bottom, and they're the perfect topping for little pedophores, or in this case, we can squeeze them in any little areas where we need to fill in details. Right? <clears throat> I'm gonna slide this, oh, sorry, too much talking today, off to the side, <clears throat> and just give you a brief overview of piping a rose with a flower nail. So if you've never used a flower nail before, right, this is a nice big one, yeah, love it. You're gonna, in general, hold it between your thumb and your first, right, three fingers. And you're gonna use your thumb to rotate the nail. So start with it far back and practice pushing it forward all the way to the tips of your fingers. And it's a little hard for me to do with my hand in a position so that you can see it right and you want to practice retracting it and pushing it towards your fingers that way you get nice smooth steady rotation when you're working on your flowers and that steady rotation will mean that your petals are nice and even so if you've never worked with one before just hold it in your hand while you're doing something else whether it's surfing the internet reading an article you know something kind of mindless and just practice pushing it back and forth and this 104 tip right it has that skinny end of opening skinny end of the opening at the top and the fat at the bottom. That skinny opening is the top edge of your petal. The fat is the stable bottom. So if you're getting petals on your rose that look like they're chunky, it may just be that you have it upside down, right? And then when we go to pipe on the nail, you're gonna pipe a nice mound of frosting that you're gonna attach your petals to. And in order for those petals to look like they're opening up, the first one, if you think about your uh, little flower as if it's a clock face you're looking at, you're gonna angle the top edge of that tip over like it's towards 10 o'clock and rotate and pipe that first inside petal on. And then when you do the first row of petals, you're gonna hold it straight up and down like it's at 12 o'clock, right? And that'll give you petals that are straight up. And then we're gonna rotate it out when we get that fat end of the opening down towards the bottom for a third row and have it like it's at two o'clock so that when we put our petals on, it looks like they're opening up, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of those in case that all sounded like nonsense, right? I'm gonna use just a little bit of frosting to attach a piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna take this and build up a nice mound, right? So you can see I have a nice little cone of frosting. If you need to, go ahead, spin a little more on there if you need to build it up, right? And you can see I'm holding it so that the fat end of the tip is down and the skinny end is laying over the center, right, of that buildup. And I'm gonna circle it all the way around and make a central closed petal, right? Then for my first row, I'm holding that tip so that the skinny opening is straight up and down and I'm pulling towards myself in a nice kind of soft, little curved motion as I spin it, right? And you can see that gives me petals that are straight up and down. And then for my third row, I'm gonna angle that tip so that it's out, right? Not only then is it easier to get the fat end underneath and attach it to our cone of frosting, but it means that our petals are gonna open outwards, right? And so you just go until you fill all the way around and you get a beautiful basic rose. I find they're easier to handle if I take the paper, put it on a tray, put them in the refrigerator. But if you can't wait, you can always use a flower lifter, right? So if you've never used one of these, it's like a little offset pair of scissors that you can slide underneath. Ooh, and depending on how soft your frosting is, your petals might slump a little bit. You can see that one's trying to fall off. Right, so I find it's always just a little easier if we set them in the fridge first before we use them. But, so that's the basics of a rose, right? And they take some practice, so if you do a couple and they don't look right, 
just keep doing them and keep going back and making sure you're holding the tip, right? The opening at the right angle. So inside for the first, straight up for the second row, out for the third row of petals and keep going at it until you do a whole bunch and eventually they'll start to get there, right? So as far as our little cupcakes go, we'll get to the fun part of our project, right? And I've got a nice rose that I had, oh, thank you, um, all ready to go. And I'm gonna just put it right there, right? And use a small spatula to lift it in place because this guy was in the refrigerator. So, oh, oh. and that's also good because I get the dropsies some days, right? If they're nice and cold, it doesn't matter if you manhandle them a little bit and get that in place and then I can pipe around it. So I'm gonna use the different techniques to go in and fill in this area. So maybe do a few of my nice green dots that I'll top with white in a little bit. I've got a big area over here. So fill that in with a small rosette. Coming over here with my star tip. Right, and you can see very quickly, I fill the entire surface of the cupcake. And anywhere I need to, I can come in easily with my 352 leaf tip. Right, if I want, where are they? Things to stand out a little bit. Maybe add a few little white sprinkles. Go in over on this side, right? and top those green dots with some white and that'll give it some contrast as well. And we get a beautiful cupcake that's perfect and ready for afternoon tea, bridal showers, birthdays, whatever. Uh, if the roses are a little bit much right now in terms of skill and you feel like you still need some practice or you get into your project and you realize you're just tired and don't wanna pipe a whole bunch of them, you can always try a nice simplified version do a bigger rosette and then go in with your star tip. Some large, some small, right? Really easy to fill it up. And then I do what I call a nice little ribbon technique where I take the fat end of my petal tip and just do some little styled zigzags that give you a beautiful effect. And since this is very monotone, I like to add a few of those white sprinkles just to kind of set off the difference in the colors. So this is a very easy version. This one's a little more complicated, takes a little more practice and a little more time, but they look beautiful either way. Even the simple ones look gorgeous and they're a great way to practice your roses, right? So I think that covers most of what we wanted to cover today. If anyone has any questions or wants to see anything specific, again, please let us know. And I also did a little mock-up mini cake because this is also a great way to decorate a cake. So you, obviously this one is really tiny, but it's really easy to do this all over the top of a six or an eight inch cake and just kind of keep repeating the elements and you can make a really beautiful design. And if you wanna do something like a six inch cake and then a set of cupcakes to go with it, it's a great display for a party. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.